I would like to say welcome to my teaching, all of you, and thank you very much for coming, uh, all of you. Uh, I would like to also say thank you to Ken, Jenny, uh, <clears throat> Mary, uh, Kate, Martin, <laughs> Heather, Anne, uh, and Jeremy Tobden. <laughs> what else? So thank you very much for all the help uh, and get everything ready for this uh, uh, great uh, Guru Yoga retreat. Um, and I'm very happy to have this uh, good opportunity to talk about how to um, practice Guru Yoga <clears throat> uh, with all of you. Uh, so we're going to have a kind of two short retreat, I mean like five days. When you read it with a group like this, um, it is uh, important that you create the best uh, possible conditions for your retreat. Uh, make sure that uh, while your, your body is uh, in this retreat, in this room, uh, and also make sure your mind um, doesn't wander back home or somewhere else. Uh, that's most important when you go to retreat. <clears throat> if you can let go everything, just uh, be yourself here, both your body and mind here, and just to relax and, you know, uh, try to work with your mind. Uh, and you have to kind of let go everything, your business, your family, your friend, everything, just let go. And uh, <clears throat> uh, your body and mind should be focused on the same thing, which is Guru Yoga, practice Guru Yoga. And one of the most important is uh, correct, correct in your mind, right? More your motivation correct in your motivation, uh, why you come here, uh, what is the uh, benefit. Um, you should feel I'm so fortunate to uh, have this perfect uh, uh, human life, precious human life, in which I have the opportunity to practice. Uh, Therefore, uh, when you go to retreat or meditate, uh, no matter what samsaric experiences uh, you have during the retreat, uh, you should say yourself, I, I shall control my mind and this retreat benefit for myself and also for other living beings. Um, this is how you correct your motivation, right? Uh, <clears throat> we're going to uh, meditate a lot and recite the mantras, uh, prayers, uh, uh, all the virtuous things uh, good for yourself, um, develop your meditation, good for others, uh, also, this month is actually a very important month, according to Tibetan calendar. Saga Dawa, Saga, Saga means actually Saya Saga, means millions, you know, Dawa means month, so millions month. Uh, so uh, I 
uh, today is oh, what today is um, no that's the not Tibetan clean huh? No, today is Tibetan. I think third or fourth or something. Seventh, something like that. Sixth. Sixth? Okay, good, good, good. So if you really also can uh, stop eating meat uh, at least this month, will be really beneficial. You know, I uh, already requested some who are uh, sort of friend of my Facebook, and uh, I sent some also emails, all of my students, if you uh, can stop eating meat at least this month. Uh, that's really benefit for you and for the animals, for killers. Um, so if you can, you have to uh, <clears throat> know that this month, today is the sixth, so the whole month, if you can. And also, uh, as much as you can practice, uh, at least this month, very important. This month is uh, three, one is Buddha's birthday, and also Buddha's enlightenment day, uh, also Buddha's passed away, three important days in this Saga, saga Dawa. So that's why this month is the most important month in Tibetan, according to Tibetan Buddhism calendar. Uh, so that's why we uh, should try to, uh, of course, during this, this week, this retreat, no meat at all. But uh, if you can, a whole month, um, that would be really nice. I just would like to <clears throat> say that, you know that. And... Uh, then you should, you know, correct your motivation. And uh, so that's the first things. When whatever you do, whatever you practice, whatever you do, good things, you have to correct your motivation. And today, the, the first, the morning section, uh, I mean, in this morning, I would like to uh, talk in a little bit about the basic uh, meditation so that you will know how it is important to practice Guru Yoga. Mm. And then the second section, uh, we will practice Guru Yoga. Morning section, not Guru Yoga. Okay, second section, Guru Yoga. And so it is important to understand the teachings and uh, then practice, right? Uh, but in order to learn in and practice, we need to know um, the most important is how we are fortunate that we have these uh, uh, opportunities. Um, we have the precious human life that you have to know how you are very how you are fortunate. Uh, the precious human life. It's amazing. And uh, uh, also we found it the great path, uh, which is the, the Mahayana, uh, the Buddhism. Uh, it's a great path. <clears throat> so uh, first we need to understand that, uh, you know, the value of your human's life, your precious human life, and then also the value of the meditation of dharma, or the path, great path, you have to know these two things, how you have, you founded these two things. That's why I say how you are, you know, we all, I mean, so fortunate. Uh, but we have to recognize that, we have to know that. Uh, if you know that, then you will think, uh, you know, you, you want to do something meaningful. You don't want to waste your, this precious human life, you know. Oh, I have this, so many good opportunities. So we never know what will happen. So uh, while I have these opportunities, I have to do something, right? Good for yourself and good for others. 
So, uh, so that's I you know um, we need to think about it, uh, and the meaning for life is so important. Uh, we have to do something, right? Otherwise, really, we never know what will happen. Uh, actually, it is important to at least understand some fundamental uh, principle before you start uh, medita medit meditation practice. Uh, Buddha Shakyamuni gave so many different teachings uh, to different people. Uh, but we need to understand uh, what kind of teaching good for us. Um, and in general speaking, the, the essence of Buddha's uh, teaching is, you know, right, avoid harming, harming others um, and help them as much as uh, possible uh, with, with pure motivation. Uh, and when I say that with pure motivation, that means uh, in Tibetan we call motivation, we call kun long, two words, kun long. Kun uh, refers to all uh, the thoughts, all the thoughts we have in our mind. And long means uh, to give rise and uh, develop only the important th thoughts. Gun long. Gun is so many thoughts. We have good thoughts, good, bad thoughts, ne neutral thoughts, right? But long means give right, develop only, develop only the important thoughts, which means thinking about others. Don't harm others and do whatever you do, correct your motivation and benefit for everybody. That's what we call important thoughts. Uh, because if we don't have this kind of good motivation, uh, then what happens? Even if uh, we do good things, uh, it's not beneficial. Understand? Um, this is only how we, how we will understand that what is different between virtuous and unvirtuous, or beneficial or not beneficial. Only depends on your motivation, not your actions, not, you know, uh, even though it looks like you do something good things inside your motivation, maybe selfish, maybe something not beneficial. So we never call that uh, virtue, right? Uh, um, or virtue means actually beneficial, beneficial. So if you have this good motivation, whatever you do is beneficial and it's we call it virtues in Tibetan Buddhism. That's why the motivation is the most important. Uh, that's why you have to correct this, you have to correct uh, all the time. That's why Buddha said, abandon negative actions, create perfect virtue, which means that, you know, subdue your mind, subdue on your mind. That means correct your mind, whatever you do. Uh, and uh, so before we start meditation or listen teaching, um, I would like to remind you that when we meditate, uh, so this, there actually the the most important, the correct your motivation. And then uh, also actually there are three important things to remember when you meditate, okay? Um, uh, of course, I'm sure uh, uh, already many of you know all, all of these things, these three things, but maybe it is, uh, I mean, it is so important to remember this, right? <clears throat> Sometimes people know, but they don't remember, or maybe they think that's not so important or something. So that's why I always, in my teaching, my, my teachers, and we all, when we have teaching, we always say, even though people know, but just to remind that these are very important and make sure you have uh, these three things uh, when you meditate. So 
according to Buddhism, uh, it is important to practice correctly, right? Correctly and pure, what, which means uh, motivation, right? Because if you have good intention or good motivation, then your path and your, uh, your goal will be good and successful. Jigme Langba is the, um, uh, the Longshin Bas, one of his uh, important students. He said that whenever you have a good intention, good motivation, then your path and your goal, your aim will be successful. Uh, so you understand three things. First, how you start, how you start your meditation, right? And second, how you uh, maintain the practice meditation. And third, how you finish your practice. Understand? I will not talk uh, these three things in detail because uh, uh, maybe the, some of the uh, assistants, they will uh, talk this in more detail maybe. But I just to remind you, these are very important. So let's say first, uh, 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 the um, pure motivation and correctly practice. Uh, I would like to say that we all have the Buddha nature, right? We all have the Buddha nature, uh, which means the, the seed of become a Buddha. Uh, we have all that, but this is obscured right now. We can't sort of recognize it. And uh, as a result, we all sort of um, wonder and this samsara or, uh, and uh, suffering or unhappy, whatever you call it. Uh, so therefore, we need to um, compassion. We need to bodhicitta for all beings, right? Uh, all living beings include animals, uh, insects. We have this Buddha nature, but we don't recognize. Um, and wonder in this samsara, samsara, this world. Uh, as long as you don't recognize, then sometimes you are very suffering. So that's why we have to, uh, 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 we need sort of to compassion for all the beings. Because we, we are, there is no question that we are equal, don't want uh, any kind of suffering any kind of suffering. So this, that's why we have to generate, right, the bodhicitta mind. I always say this is the most important. I mean, this is also, bodhic if you have mind, bodhicitta mind, your motivation is pure, very pure. That we call correct your motivation. Why we, why we need bodhicitta? Because of, um, because of the uh, suffering. All living beings don't want suffering exactly the same as, uh, want happiness. So that's why we need compassion. We need compassion. Uh, compassion is, doesn't come your mind automatically. We have to meditate on it. Uh, and if you meditate, you can develop your compassion because we have the seed, the seed of Buddha or the nature, Buddha nature. And we also, uh, within, we have already uh, the, not the great compassion, but we have already compassion within us. So we have to that develop uh, and transform into great compassion, which is bodhicitta. So that's why uh, uh, the first is correct motivation means give rise to bodhicitta or living beings. Uh, this is how we start our med meditation, uh, which is practice with pure motivation. Uh, and uh, and then the, the second is to have a mind free from free from conceptualization, uh, which means to practice without uh, distraction and practice without losing focus. Uh, for example, if you let come lots of thoughts, uh, then 
the thoughts destroys your inner peace um, and concentration, uh, then you will lose your main practice, right? Um, whatever you do, should try to practice with concentrated mind and with sort of mindfulness. That is the second. That's the second important. And then, of course, finally, when you have done anything that good or virtue uh, must be, uh, you should dedicate for the sake of all living beings. So this is how you finish your meditation. Uh, so these three things you should keep in your mind and remember when you meditate, okay? Um, um, of course, uh, many of you already know this in very detail, uh, but uh, just knowing is not enough. You have to really uh, remember and you have to use them uh, when you meditate, when you do something good. It's not only meditate, medit meditation, right? Whatever you do something good for yourself, good for others, you have to remember these three uh, principles, we call it three principles, um, methods or something like that. Uh, and uh, 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 these are actually uh, in the According to what my perfect teacher, it's so important uh, information of Buddhism. But you know, um, you called it Buddhism or you called it not Buddhism. That I think doesn't matter. You know, uh, the 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 ultimate of Dharma practice is to understand about uh, ourself, understand about yourself, understand about others. Uh, so the, the aim of meditation is to transform the mind, right? So it does not have to, uh, I always say that, uh, associate it with any particular religion, uh, actually, you know, um, because every one of us have a mind, right? Have a consciousness, have a mind, have a thoughts, and every one of us can work on it. Uh, it doesn't, I think, it doesn't matter uh, uh, what religion is. It's just uh, these three important things. We all need this because, you know, I think this is the point, you know, no matter what. Uh, so, <clears throat> so that's, I think, just to remind, remind you. And we have to find a way of putting that, our wish, uh, into action and practice meditation. Uh, meditation is a practice that makes uh, it possible to cultivate and uh, develop uh, sort of certain basic uh, positive human qualities, you know, like a compassion, like a bodhicitta mind, uh, like a wisdom, um, and to realize about bodhicitta and emptiness. Uh, that's the that's the, actually the essence of Buddha's teaching, to realize the, the union of bodhicitta and emptiness. That is the essence. Uh, in addition, meditation has beneficial effects, our physical and also mental health, of course, right? Uh, so, uh, so that's why always the object of meditation is what? Is your mind, always. Uh, we need to sort of develop uh, our mind's uh, sort of emotional balance, uh, inner peace and wisdom. So we have within ourselves the, the potential to develop these qualities, but they sort of will not develop by themselves or just uh, because we want them to, you know. Uh, according to Buddhism, the, 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 the five what do you call it, afflictions, five poisons, this ignorance, attachment, uh, anger, jealous, and um, this pride, or what, arrogant, all these are the principal cause of all the problems of our life. So the best is we have to remove all these problems created by automatic thoughts. Uh, but if we can't remove all of them, um, then at least 
we should try to reduce them, right? If you remove all of this completely, that we call the Buddha. But we uh, try to reduce them, you know, less anger, less attachment, less ignorance, less jealous. Uh, that's, that's, that's perfect, I mean. Uh, that's also sometimes we call, you know, uh, great practitioner or bodhisattva. I mean, diminish all afflictions, these five poisons, completely is difficult. Uh, but I think that's fine if you have a really a good mind, kind mind, bodhicitta mind, then no matter what you do, you know, with these afflictions, I think very beneficial, um, uh, you know, but, uh, but we need to know these are the, the, the main cause, our sort of uh, unhappiness, that's for sure. So if you uh, try to reduce them, make you sort of really um, happy, I think. Um, if we have sort of established a good foundation, uh, we can remove this actually. The good foundation is what? These three principles, just I told you, especially the bodhicitta, the compassion. That's the good foundation. Then we can slowly, we can remove these uh, afflictions. Otherwise, otherwise, it is kind of pointless to try to find a right path and happiness, you know. Uh, this is, I, will, I studied Buddhism uh, and practiced Buddhism 30, more than 30 years. Now I think I will understand and find more and more. And uh, without bodhicitta, really you can't practice Buddhism. Uh, even though teachers and students try to the, uh, practice the best, you know, the highest practice, the Dzogchen, the Mahamudra, this emptiness, all of this, but it doesn't work uh, without bodhicitta. Mm. And when I read book and uh, uh, these great masters and like Pater Rinpoche, like Jingme Langba, like you know Longchenpa, all these masters, now I just really they the teaching, their teaching, the essence of the teaching is actually how to uh, develop bodhicitta mind. Uh, that's I understand more and more. And I, when I think about my teachers, the instructions, uh, I just really deeply remember that they really focus on how to develop bodhicitta mind. They focus on that. Now, when I was kind of young, I didn't sort of uh, realize that. They really sort of emphasize that they teach about bodhicitta. But now I just... Uh, I think that uh, my old teachers not not here, you know, they all pass away. And uh, I always think that their instructions, right? And when I practice Guru Yoga, uh, what is their instructions, what important teachings, then I remember, oh yeah, yeah, bodhicitta. The essence is the bodhicitta. So I think uh, that's really good because uh, it's not only Buddhist, this for everybody. Bodhicitta is you know, um, good for everybody. Uh, that's why uh, I think we need to establish a good foundation, uh, which is bodhicitta. Then easy to remove the attachment, ignorance, anger, all this easy, easy to remove if you have bodhicitta mind. If you, you should check yourself. If you don't have bodhicitta mind, no. Then whatever you practice, pointless, I say pointless, and note correct, you are not on correct right path. That's for sure, according to Buddhism. Um, and if you have bodhicitta mind, uh, then no matter what you do, I mean, it's really beneficial. 
So uh, that's that is the important, the principle, the goal, and the the kind of the final result of practicing is the realization through bodhicitta. Okay, uh, that's why the practice Guru Yoga is important. Uh, when you practice Guru Yoga without bodhicitta, it doesn't work. Okay. Uh, Important to remember that you have to practice Guru Yoga with Bodhicitta. Uh, that's the, 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 the kind of uh, first and then second result of the practice is to remove all these obstacles from our minds so that we have more uh, sort of uh, successful life, peaceful lives. So in order to recognize the fundamental nature of the mind. We have to remove all these five afflictions through practice bodhicitta and guru yoga. Sometimes, you know, people, I think, they, people think that these afflictions are part of our sort of basic nature. And then, you know, if, the, if that, then it is impossible to remove, right? Something basic nature. But these are not part of the, our nature mind. That's clear. Um, these are like a cloud in the sky. The nature of sky is not, not a cloud. This kind of temporarily related. So. For a while, you know, and temporarily, uh, the cloud sort of obscured the, 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 the sun, you know, but the cloud is not part of the sun or sky. So therefore, eventually, they will uh, separate from each other, right? Um, so the ultimate nature of mind is behind all these concepts and all these afflic what you call afflictions. The afflictions, not the part of our nature mind. Um, however, it's, it's, it's difficult to catch hold the mind because uh, it is sort of hiding, you know, behind our so many thoughts um, that are always in motion. So we need to use skillful means to catch hold of our mind. Uh, so the best way to work with our mind is through meditation about Guru Yoga. Uh, in meditation, uh, you can experience a state of mind that is without thoughts, free from disturbance. Um, you can actually uh, use both your mind and body as a part of your meditation, uh, but the more important is the mind, okay? Uh, for that reason, why Buddhism is really talking all the time, talking about how to take care of our mind. The root and the cause, good and bad, is the, the mind itself. It does anything and everything. So that's why, that's why um, relatively, you know, we have to, uh, in order to control our um, mind, relatively we have, we need bodhicitta. And ultimately, we need to recognize uh, nature of mind. Because everything is depends on our minds. Everything, inside, outside, everything comes from our mind. So that's why, uh, and relatively, if you have bodhicitta mind, whatever you do, yourself, others, beneficial, right? Ultimately, you have to recognize the Buddha nature, because you already you have that. 
that's ultimately uh, ultimate ultimate point of view. I mean, then the then eventually you have to practice union, relative level and ultimate level, not separate. But first we practice separately because it's difficult to sort of union of this uh, bodhicitta and uh, the uh, what do you call ultimate bodhicitta. Actually, we call that, right? I call ultimate bodhicitta and relative bodhicitta. Ultimate bodhicitta is your nature mind. Ultimate bodhicitta is great perf perfection. Relative bodhicitta is great compassion. So, it's very easy, right? So we have to develop great c compassion first. Once you have a great compassion, then easy to recognize the ultimate bodhicitta. That's all about Buddhism, actually. Buddha teaches, you know, so many, the, the, like, we have 300 uh, texts from Buddha, Buddha's teaching. But in shortly, you say like this too, relative bodhicitta and ultimate bodhicitta. If you practice that, then you practice everything. You practice everything, all these 300 books. You practice all of them. That's how Buddha, Buddha Shakyamuni, became a Latin. He's, he came to the royal family, and one, one, one day he went, you know, kind of visit in the, the village. And then he saw this, you know, people are sick, people are very poor, people are very old, uh, you know, death and birth. He, he, he saw that and think about it. And if, if, if you know, I become a king, of India, like, you know, I can't help all of this suffering. Then he, he, you know, investigate, investigate. He finally, he understood, oh, the most important, I have to become a Buddha. Then I can help. So why he practice, why he start, he meditate? Because of his compassion, right? Compassion for all of this, suffering people, suffer. Then he, you know, let go everything and practice. Only bodhicitta. Great compassion. Buddha is actually full of compassion. He really sees He's, he's, he feels that animals, human beings, all these living beings like his child. He loves everybody. You know? That's his practice. That's the bodhicitta we call. Nothing other than that. If you have great compassion, it's amazing, really. You know? His uh, Buddha is just, uh, uh, you know, if you think about his life, he's really grateful for us. If B Buddha didn't come in this earth in no teachings, we have no this great path. We have no idea. So that's why, you know, uh, it's so important to practice bodhicitta. You know, that's the, that's the, that's the point. You should uh, really, um, I always emphasize that maybe this is too much now, but I just want, I want to just uh, push again and again you, you know, practice bodhicitta. Uh, and uh, when I practice bodhicitta, I feel really, you know, uh, Something, you know, I get something, you know, I get blessings and it's easily changed my mind. And 
then I have no desire to harm others, you know. Then I just, no matter I see, you know, animals, people, or whatever, I just, uh, I just uh, you know, feel really love, you know. I don't want harm. But without bodhicitta, you practice like great perfection, or emptiness, you don't have this kind of feeling. That's the problem. You see, everything is no exist, everything is like empty. That's all. But you don't have this the compassion. You you don't you don't have this love, you know, to everybody. Then your meditation, even though you meditate great perfection, that's the, the highest, that's the really uh, important teaching. But you know, without bodhicitta, you have no compassion, you have no love. Then it doesn't work, you know. It doesn't work. Uh, so when you practice bodhicitta, you just, uh, you know, um, it's, it's very easy and it's very profound meditation. And then you just uh, automatically, you just, uh, you know, feel that, you know, uh, the compassion and love everybody. And you just uh, don't want, there's no desire to harm others. That's the point, I think. I think that's the point. So, before we meditate Guru Yoga, okay, I want, uh, I want to practice uh, today the Totonglen practice, you know, the, which is compassion and, and love. Um, and these are the part of uh, practice Bodhicitta. I have lots of experience about this meditation because, you know, I always meditate and I always teach this. No matter what I teach, first I teach love and compassion, love and Bodhicitta. So uh, we have a uh, uh, few minutes. So first of all, in order to practice, meditate, uh, first of all, visualize just, uh, just one person that you know who is suffering or visualizing yourself in front of you, okay? Um, uh, and visualize that when you, this combination, your breath, Visualize when you when you breathe in, you are removing, uh, removing, and all of this the, the this person's suffering, and then need to hold your okay need to hold your breath uh, for a second, and then think this person is freed freed of every sort of physical and mental suffering are removed. This is compassion practice with with the breath. And then you start to breathe out. Visualize that you are giving this person or yourself, you know, all of positive virtue, happiness, pros what do you call it? Pros pros prosperity, all this uh, happiness. And then you need to hold your breath for a second. Uh, and uh, think that giving, give him or yourself Great love, great love. This is loving practice with the breath. When you breathe out, you practice in love, love. When you breathe in, you practice compassion. Okay? So compassion and love practice with breathe in and breathe out. The love and compassion is part of bodhicitta practice. Bodhicitta, when you develop practice bodhicitta, first you have to practice love and compassion. Okay, and uh, uh, so this is this is we call also analytical meditation. So uh, you do this over again and again, right? Uh, breathe in, breathe out. Think about this person's suffering. Take, take, remove, remove the sufferings and given the the happiness, and that's the compassion, love, and kindness. And then that's we call analytical meditation. If your mind Try to think this, uh, then you can rest, just to rest without thinking and without sort of following your uh, thoughts. Just to relax, just to relax and let your mind and breath dissolve sort of in, in the space uh, and kind of emptiness. And, uh, and then you should look deeply uh, your nature, nature mind, everything, the nature. And then when your thoughts come out again, start practice compassion and love. So you need practice this kind of 
analytical and relaxed meditation kind of alternately, right? So we need both sometimes. Um, uh, not only uh, analytical meditation, because then you're uh, also sometimes uh, tired and sort of get get um, headache. So analytical meditation and then relax. And then your thoughts arise, do again, do that, okay? Understand? So first relax, 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 relax your body and your mind, relax. Comfortable. Um, and relax, relax. And then when you breathe in very gently, okay, very gently, very gently breathe in, kind of slowly, gently. Then a little bit pause your breath and below the area of the navel and then visualize taking and giving meditation. Visualize the compassion and love. And do not follow the thoughts of the past and the future just to let them go. Just to remain in the present moment and with your whole strength and clarity focus on the mind and the breath. Slowly allow yourself to enter more deeply into quiet, peaceful, calm. But also just let it be in, in awareness. When you breathe in and breathe out, you have to feel it and relax. You have to feel your compassion and your love.
All right. Short meditation. <laughs> it's actually 10.37. Um, take a break. And then, then we'll start meditate on Guru Yoga. This meditation is kind of uh, uh, appetizer. 